the first thing that I would do is install our CIS benchmark package. This is a newly installed Ubuntu server instance. It's a server virtual VM. Once you install the package, you have the SCAP content available on user share security guides. And in here, you see uh, the oval XCDF files, which are used in the OpenSCAP tool. You also see a few scripts here, and we also have hardening tool that is shipped with this package, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. To launch a scan, we use OSCAP with a bunch of uh, parameters where you specify which is the XCDF file, the part to your XCDF file, what dictionary files you use, which is basically the schema that you use for your OVAL, and uh, if you need any reports to be generated and things like that. So for a simple scan, the CIS benchmark has different profiles. It has a level one server, two level two server, workstation level one, and level two workstation. For a simple CIS scan, we ship a utility with this package, which is called CIS Audit. So if you just run CIS Audit uh, with a super user privilege, it launches a level one server scan. And you can see it runs all the rules that are applicable to a level one server. And it just takes under a minute to finish that. So it generates an HTML report. I have just uh, caught that on my machine and you can see how that looks. This is basically the report before you do any sort of hardening. So you know, freshly install Ubuntu server machine uh, instance and you have for a level one server, 65 rules that did not satisfy the condition. It actually tells you which rules fail in this HTML report. And uh, you can, this is essentially the report that's generated. Now what I do, I'm going to go back and harden this machine against the standard. So I go back to where it is installed and you can see there's a CIS. What we do is uh, the CIS hardening is implemented uh, by a bunch of uh, scripts and we also ship a configuration file which allows the user to customize some of the configurations that are required for some rules. For example, you decide who is a user on your machine. You actually, for your SSH configuration, you specify the users, groups. You can specify which is your NTP server here. And the first parameter here, so the explanation to all of this uh, customizations parameters, everything is provided in a readme that is shipped with the package that explains which rules are automated, which there are a couple of rules which may need manual configuration. For example, setting a root password, that would be, and setting, doing some, for a level two scan or level two automation, you actually need partitioning, certain type of partitioning to be implemented. CIS recommends that. All of those would have to be done manually. For example, network firewall configurations, we do not automate those, but I would say, you know, up to 80, a uh, little over 80% of rules are automated. For a bootloader password uh, to be set, you could provide a hash of that password over here. And you can set the user for the bootloader. I am actually adding myself as a user of the pseudo group. And uh, so you do this customizations and some of the configuration settings that are required. And over here, you can see us uh, actually the there are some default values that is configuration plugins. For example, the NTP, it actually gives a pool.ntp.org and it also uses some of the default values for the audit log max uh, storage. So if defaults are not provided, some of those rules will be skipped by the uh, hardening script. For example, the SSH configuration, those rules will be skipped and it expects values for the pseudo member and some of those other parameters that I just went through. After this, you just launch that main hardening script. Again, the hardening script can also be run against uh, different levels on the benchmark, level one server, level two server, level one workstation, and level two workstation. So I'm just running, now we just ran a level one scan. Let's do a level one hardening and uh, we can see how this uh, works. So it's running rules by section and the benchmark.
takes about a minute to finish the level one hardening. You can actually run this hardening script multiple times. We do recommend that this be run on a freshly installed system and not on a production system, just because you know it alters all the configuration files that are on the machine that may actually have unintended consequences if you're running on a production machine. So what we recommend is in a fresh installed machine, you know, harden the machine via the scripts and then run your scan. You can run the scan multiple times to see if anything has uh, deviated from the benchmark. Okay, so it generates a log, so you can see what rules are skipped and an entire log, what it dumps on the screen, you can actually see everything in a log as well. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run the CI scan again to see what this hardening did. Did it improve anything? I'm gonna run this again. Okay, so you can see that the audit scan generates an HTML report here. I have uh, mode again copied it to my machine. This one over here, this is the scan after the hardening and you can see that from 64 we are down to five rules that didn't pass. So the first one it was 65. These five rules are mostly that need manual configuration. For example, the setting the bootloader password, which I didn't do. I could have set the hash in the config file. And this is setting the root password. And uh, some of the firewall rules, we ask for a manual configuration. We do not automate that. And uh, I also did not set those allow and deny users SSH config file in the root parameter config file. So once you set those two and do the manual configuration of uh, those rules, you can expect level one server compliant Ubuntu. This is pretty easy and simple. You know, just under a couple of minutes, you have a hardened Ubuntu image.